some calves, John Tuttle Flint knife, and I hope we can get over the fan running. I got a whole bunch of uh, heat traded Buffalo River, and I'm gonna these are just uh, pieces that were knocked off of the big rock. I'm gonna work them down the pre farm, and maybe it might help you uh, with your pre farm making skills. And you might, might pick up on something or learn something on that. Uh, Look at this thing, it's got the big turtle bite. And uh we're gonna get rid of that, but we're gonna do this first. I'll show you how I'm gonna approach it. Everybody kind of has their own uh, ideas what to do things. But uh I'm gonna try to take this side across here and come down and hit like this. Now then, I'm going to do it on this side and come this way. This rock's chipping real good, but I like to put a little more heat on it than this. I might reheat this. Uh, it turned, I think it'll turn uh, more of a red color if I reheat re treat it, run it up to a high temperature. All right, we gotta get this turtle back out. Let's see what we can do. I'm gonna try this uh, big old hollow bopper on it first. See what kind of mass it moves. Did pretty good. I'm gonna go try the solid copper on this side. Hitting down like this, that's setting my platform up. Bring that platform up. Right, now we're going to take this and see what kind of plates it'll remove. About the same, I can't tell much difference. Yep, about the same. Just gonna keep hitting down and down and down. I start through here and come back. I'm bringing it in this way. So what it's doing is rolling it over big time. To help me get all this hump out. Now we're gonna grind this side. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. See how it rolled it? Roll it over like that. Getting these ready to sell. Checking them cracks, getting all the cortex off. <clears throat> now, I'm going to try to run this one. This way off of the platform right there. Went all the way down to there. Bring this. Keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Gotta get a good rollover. I won't call it a rollover. <laughs> That's my new invention for it. See how it turns down, roll down.
see it got all the cortex off of it. That little hump right here we're gonna take out to be ready to put up the sail and make a nice uh, lost lake or a knife blade or a dent. Got enough width to it. I'm hitting, uh, I'll show you what I'm doing. Let me grind this right here real good. My my rollover is not the dominant, it's on the other side. But what I'm doing is I'm turning this more this way and I'm hitting more on top like that. Let me try to see how far I'm on this. By falling through like that. Look at that. That's what you follow through to us. Now I wasn't following through until then. Uh, so why not? Because I'm not as accurate as when I do that. I have to do it a little while to get the hang of it. There's more punching. And I'm more accurate coming down like this. It's a hard sway. Because I do this more than normal. But uh, follow through is is uh very important running long plates if you won't run long plates long plates i mean halfway across the feather that's going to follow through look at that follow through you don't have to hit it hard either i'll show you on this side you might have to hit it hard i should not have said that but in a lot of cases, you don't have to because you're not running as far. Like right here, I'm just coming down with a light one because I don't need to go as far. That's what I was trying to say. There we go. Now, I didn't follow through on that one. I, I'm used to not doing it. I just sit there and, went, and watch this. Yep. That little hinge that I didn't notice. It's kind of stacked like that one. There we go. All right, this one's going to be put up to sail here. It's ready to go. All right, let me find another. This got all kind of light looking junk. That looks like paint. Yeah, that's what that is. Spray paint or something got on it. I'm just punching straight down with this. And what it's doing is giving me that good rollover I was telling you about a, a platform. <laughs> now, if I hit here, we got a low air right this that would do nothing. But if I hit here, it's coming up all the way. If I hit on top, the light will go across. It got quiet, but it almost did. Now, I'm gonna hit here where it's lower, but I'm hitting this way. I'm not trying to run a plate. Just trying to bring this big up kind of hitting down like this. Now I've got it all going uphill. Got a crack going across here. I don't know how it's going to affect anything. It might not go all the way through the rock. I don't know if we get out and check it out. Look at the slope on this. 
And when you got a slope like this, the best thing to do is follow the angle of the slope like that and hit. So you won't hinge. You just whatever that angle of that slope is, top it and come down and hit the edge. this way. Show you the slope I got. Got a nice slope right there. I'm going to run it like that. I'm going to come through here, follow through, run that joker all the way up to there. Now we got to work over this side so we chip straight out. On both sides, this side, this side. Got a little step factor there. Got rid of that. I'll explain to you what I'm talking about. A uh, little step factor right here, that's part of it there. If I hit on that, it wouldn't take nothing off. So I had to kind of move it to where I'm not hitting on it. Moved a little bit out of there. Couldn't get a good of uh, My platform was not what it should have been, but that's the best I could do at the time because it's all them little chatter marks or chips in the side of that edge. Now these are good platforms here. Still having trouble over here because of the same situation. There's a lot of little chatters or little hinges in there, so I'm gonna hit on top of this like this, up high and straight down and see if I can get under that stuff. There we go, I got under it. Do it right here. Now let me see if I can pull it back up. And have a smooth surface. No, nope. still a bad one right there, so I'm gonna hit over here. Now see if I can get under this. There we go. Now it's smooth all the way down. There's not any chatter marks that's gonna mess this up. I forgot I, how thick that mask was. I had to hit it hard. I was just doing like that. I said, dang, I got a big old bowling ball sitting on that side of that thing. Trying to move some mass, you gotta put some elbow grease in it. Like coming across here, I'm gonna come down and hit it hard. So I'm running across that big hill. Can't play around with it. I'm trying to move thick places, thick places like that. You gotta hit that joker. Okay, that one's ready to go in the, the cell pile. Now, guess what? Takes two old time.
tell you what, I'm sitting here. It's cool right now. We had a storm come through last night. This metal building's not that hot. I try to get out here as early as I can before it gets hot because I just can't take the heat. Got two little wonder units. They don't even phase it trying to cool it. All they're doing is running up an outrageous light bill. I open both doors and run these fans. But uh, I'm sitting there thinking. Got a good roof over my head. Don't leave the place to chip. I'm thinking how blessed I am. Man, I have been blessed. And uh, it's just amazing the people that uh, God has put in my life to travel with me and help me as I got up in age. I'm not able to go and pick up stuff no more and pack rocks out of crates like I used to. Get in the crate to stay all day packing rocks out of it. But uh, we had a friend lived over in Louisiana named Bo, Bo Strand. I just call him Bo Strand. And uh, Bo was a big old guy. And uh, he got a big old heart. And he's always willing to travel with me no matter where to get rocks. And he'll do all the weight lifting. And I've gone and bought saws before, and he'd help me load the saws on the trailers. And just whatever. Never wanted a penny out of it or nothing. He's retired. He's always healthy, willing to help. And then I think of a young man that when I needed somebody the most or something like that. The man come to me and said, I got this guy who works for me, so you won't learn how to make arrowheads. Would you teach him? I said, yeah, I guess so. And his name was David Berryhill, and he was a monster of a man. He'd probably pick up the back of my truck and think he's eating a sandwich because it'd be so light to him. He like eating a uh, mustard green sandwich. And he started traveling with me, and, and uh, he would take my truck and a trailer. I had a trailer that hauled 10,000 pounds. And he would go to Florida and Georgia and Texas and different places and, and uh, haul rock. And all I had to do was pay for his hotel room and his meals. He, would, he never wanted no money. I would give him rock <laughs> and change. But anything I needed, he lived about a night, not quite an hour drive from me, about 40 minutes. He would be here. Any heaven lifting. Sometimes I had big old blocks of obsidian I wanted to put in my saw. I wasn't supposed to be lifting anything. And those things probably weighed over 50 pounds. And he would come pick them up and put them in my saw for me. Once I got them in my saw, I could cut them in and go with it. Man, what a blessing he was. He still is. I mean, uh, he's got another job, and uh, I don't get to see him that much anymore. He's not working around here. But, man, what a great man that is. How important he's been to me. He'll never know what his kindness he's shared with me and done for me will mean. Will mean, I mean, has meant in my life. David Berryhill. I know I'm going to leave a bunch of them out. I'm not going to mention a couple of them. They, they've gone and passed. And, uh, but every time I needed somebody, it seemed like I could use some help and needed somebody. They just showed up, people I never knew. And uh give you another good example. Uh, this guy was on Facebook and he started a, a group called Bayou Bows and Arrows, named Kobe Nicholson, and uh, he lived down close to Baton Rouge. And he started making bows, and he found out flint flitting at him. And he come up here and spent some time with me, and I showed him all I could show him, and which ain't much. And boy, we become good friends, and he travels with me now. And we just went to Tennessee and got about a pretty good load of this stuff. And uh, he moved to Indiana. He got a got a business up there. In fact, he got a couple businesses. His wife has some family up there. They went up there and opened some businesses and going to get them going and then let some kinfolks on them and stuff like that. And uh, 
you come back, I'm just going to say Baton Rouge or South Baton Rouge, but everybody knows what Baton Rouge is. He comes back to check on his dad and uh, family every now and then, and he's back down this week, and I told him, I said, I'm going to Tennessee if you want to go with me. I said, I said, no, 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 I want to go with you. Boy, he's willing to go, and, and he's been to Texas with me, and he's hauled tons of rocks on my trailer, and he's been to everywhere with me hauling rocks. He's been with Barry Hill, the guy I was talking about, and uh, they, those two would go together, and, and uh, man, you ain't gonna pay us nothing, and just trade us a few rocks so we make some knife blades or something like that. And I'd always, you know, make sure they were happy and offered and tried to, and sometimes they, they would let me. But I'm just saying, in the last several years, I started having, started having heart problems and all, and uh, some other issues with my back and my rotator cuff. Uh, every time I need somebody, they're there, a new person. And so about four months ago, maybe five months ago, I'm at church and this young man is sitting by somebody I know. And I went up and introduced myself to him and a friend I knew. And I said, uh, this is Ben. Oh, Gwen, I'm just gonna call him Brother Ben. He's my brother Ben. And I uh, said, so he plays the guitar and he's gonna start playing in a, in a choir in the church. And uh, man, I was all excited. He said, you don't know me, but my brother used to work for you. And I said, really? And he said, yeah. And I uh, said, so, man, that's great. And uh, this one's ready to go. So anyway, uh, he don't care nothing about making no error ahead, but he loves me. And every time I talk to him, he said, I love you, brother. And he will help me. And I will call him. I said, Ben, I got some stuff wrapped around the blade in my zero turn lawnmower, and I can't get it out. I need to fix the front end up and put it on some blocks. So I can get in there and cut it out. He said, I'll be there. Whatever he's doing, he'll put it down. And, and uh, it's, it's amazing how it's all these monster men I call them. Got more muscles than they know what to do with. They show up in my life, and uh, he just reached out and picked up that zero turn more, picked the front end up about three foot in the ground, and I put a couple blocks on it. And he said, No, you don't get on there and cut that out, I will. And he got the knife, and he got on there and cut all that plastic junk I've got tangled up in it. I didn't see. And, uh, I guess the wind had blowed it behind my shop, and the grass was real high. Boy, it wrapped up in that blade and that plastic started melting and it shut that thing down. But anyway, Ben is just amazing the things he's doing for me and the way he's helped me and all. And, uh, you know, we're blessed to have people like that in our lives and we need to let them know it. Now, this piece is extremely thick and I'm using this copper hammer on it because I want to move as much mass. I'm going to try to run a long one down here. I'm going to try to set up a platform on the end of this thing. Hope I'm getting a good one set up. I'm going to turn it over and look at it. See what it looks like. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. So I'm probably liable to break it, but I'm gonna try to hit right here and run it that way. That's the cross there. Now I'm gonna try to go back this way. What I'm hoping to do is create me a ridge just like that, right down the middle. Not much of one. Could have been a lot more, but you know, I didn't try to make a light one. It just, it's just what happened. Now then, if I can get rid of this hinge right here, on this side, which I just did, I got me a ridge running down it. Right here, to hit on a good platform is what I'm trying to say. Not really. Ridge is on this side. Okay, try to hit right in here. I missed where I am. I was supposed to hit there, 
that it made that ridge more pronounced. So now I hit there and it's gonna run down a pretty good way. It followed that ridge. If I hadn't have missed, I would have got a wider place. Uh, I'm not always that accurate. <laughs> Especially this thing, it's turning on me and rolling and everything else. But I'm through with it. Got all the big mass I needed. Now I'm gonna use this one here and come back the other way. And I'm gonna shorten this piece because it's real thin and crooked. And uh, come back hit this way, get this way, this way. In nice place, I'm not gonna grind it nothing. And the reason why is I'm gonna show you. There's a little low spot right there and I want to knock it out. Now I'm gonna grind it. I still got my good platform set up. All right, see how it's grounded at the low spot right there. I want it to run all the way through there. And that's why I did what I did with it. That one run over it. it would it went further, but it wasn't deep enough to cut under it. I'm going to come back and do another pass on it. on that side which don't matter. I'm just trying to get that flattened out. It ain't hurting a thing in the world. Now then, see how this is sloping? It's almost straight down. You're going to hit you follow that slope. See how I'm hitting straight down? That'll hit you. You move some material easier when you do it like that. Now, we're going to come up through here and try to take this hinge out a long way. It might not work. Sometimes something like that works and sometimes it don't. You got, got probably at least a half inch of it out. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Try to come this way. That got all of it out. That's looking pretty good. Run that down there. Might have said a little blood. I apologize for it. If you do, I'm on blood thinner and the least little scratch of blue. And I don't wear gloves. Never have and don't want to. Just don't like to feel the nap in the gloves. I don't feel like I got a sponge in my hand. That's my, that's my, that's my, my little problem I have. I have no problem anybody wearing gloves. I think it's a smart idea, but I just, Never started off wearing them when I try them. I just feel like I can't tell what's going on when I break the flake off. Now, even if it's obsidian, I don't wear them. But, but I would recommend wearing them. But when I started out in the old days, nobody even thought about wearing gloves. So that's, that's what I got used to. Can't teach an old dog new tricks, but you can, because I learn new stuff every day. But if I used gloves long enough, I would probably get used to it. I don't like my hand hot and sweaty in the summertime, but another reason. I tried to angle that one down. Now this is where I'm gonna cut in here and make a U shape. I talk about this on a bunch of my videos. You'll notice. See how I'm making that U shape? Trying to get it just right. I know what this. This is the reason for it. I can come right in there and hit there. That U shape it's giving me a perfect spot to hit right there. I'm gonna try to run it down. 
that way. Do this side the same way. Got my little U-shape, come down. I'm so busy talking about my U-shape and concentrating on that. I didn't grind that one. Called myself to get a hinge right there because I didn't grind it. That wasn't good. Fortunately, we can get it out. It's gonna cause some extra work I don't need to be doing. So whoop, you didn't grind that one. No, I didn't. I'm gonna show you why. Didn't need to. I'm gonna explain it to you. Give me a minute. I didn't grind it because I hit way up here on it. It was like this. I didn't hit on the edge like this, that's why I ground that. You don't need to grind that when you're hitting a solid surface like that. So that's why I let it go. I'm going to hit it in and hit it right here. More than likely, but I'm still going to do it because I'm going to move this out. It took it out of hinge and broke off where the hinge was at. The first lick made a little hinge and it broke off there. That's all right. That was a nasty area in there. There's a lot of grainy stuff. It was right at the edge of the cortex. Wasn't no good quality flint. It's real grainy right in there. I'm gonna make me a little you in here. They'll come down and hit right on that ridge. I see what it run up. They're gonna run a good one right here. Got a little overhang, gonna clean it up right here. Try to run one down through there. I'm gonna brace it on my leg, hoping that hopefully it'll run further. Because it's not given when you brace it, it helps steady the motion and it stores more of your shock. You run along a plate like that. Well, that works out great. All I got to do is that. If I can hit right there. Uh, I rounded that off. And uh, can't get in there to hit it, so I'm coming on this side. I'm working into it like this. That looked like a big old sift sticking up on that thing. Looked like a knot on the inner tube fixing to blow. What's the funny? When I'm looking for artifacts out in the plowed field and all, I find a rock and it'll have a knot somewhere stacked up, look like a pyramid. There'll be nine million hinges on it, it just keeps stacking. i tell you what it looks like, if you move with trees and all, it will look like the bark on a hackerberry tree. <laughs> and I said, how in the world did he get himself in that mess? Then I got to think, well, it's probably a teenage boy learning how to plant that. <laughs> Who knows, you know? I used to get myself in that mess all the time, but the thing about it, when you get yourself in that mess, you learn how to get out of it. And I have flint knifers who tell me, well, I bought some stuff from so-and-so, and it had a lot of hinges in it, preform. And I couldn't believe the amount of hinges in it. Well, what's the big deal? I'm sitting there thinking, I tried to get all the hinges out of mine because I know some people just starting out. But if you knew what I did, you wouldn't mind it. And the ones that I tried to get them out for wouldn't mind it. Because that's how you learn getting the hinges out. I mean, you're never going to learn to drive a car if you don't get behind the steering wheel. And the price you pay 
You probably got a good enough deal that should have had injuries all through it. It's truth be known about it. So don't come whining to me about buying rock if somebody's got hinges in it. Just think about it. You'd be an expert at getting hinges out. You say, you can go to Napa and somebody says, well, if you got a hinge in there like this, how do you get it out? Well, go see old Jim Smith over there. Boy, he's good at it. Jim, how'd you learn? Well, I was buying rocks for a long time, and the free forms to learn on, they would have hinges in it, and I learned how to do it. You also watch YouTube videos, and a bunch of people show how to get them out. I tried two on mine, but there's a lot more better videos out there than mine, I promise you that. I don't know how to use a camera and how to do it right. I'm just using my old phone. And I don't know nothing about lighting. I don't understand that. I have to look at mine before I put them on YouTube because some of them, the lighting's coming through this window so bad you couldn't see them if I put them on YouTube. So I don't ever even post them. I know one thing. I'm having fun when I'm doing this. I'm in my own zone. I'm going to try to run this ridge right here. I'm putting up against my lay so it'll take all the shots going through. I'd rather do this than do finish points. I just love breaking big stuff and working it down to nice pre form. That's my favorite thing to do. I made points for a living and nice so long. I just got burnt out on People want me made just a certain way and this and that. I just like to do my thing. Put them up for sale. If you don't like what they look like, you don't buy them. I just made a big order, about 20 points for a customer. Never even took pictures of them and mailed them to him. And I said, you know, I should have took pictures of them points. I said, shoot, no. Man, glad I did. I would have been embarrassed. There's so many people out there making so much better than I could. Have. Flint napping reminds me of, of uh, tournament softball. They play a lot of traveling softball tournaments and stuff when I was younger. And uh, they come out with aluminum bats. We had wooden bats. And you buy your own bats and stuff like this. Then they come out with the bags you put your bats in. And then they started wearing gloves. Who ever heard of wearing gloves playing baseball? They got to call them sliding gloves. If I was that sissified and had to wear gloves to fly it, I wouldn't be playing a dog on sport. I'm telling you that right now. And batting gloves. We, we practiced batting with wooden bats. We had so many cows in our hand. We didn't do no gloves. We never got any blisters from bats. We did starting out practicing. But anyway, I'm getting off of my course of what I was trying to say here. You got these people that it's just never going to be good at baseball no matter what they do. But they think they are and we call them hot dogs. And they'd come out with a batting bag and they'd have 999 aluminum bats sticking out of that bag. They'd have the most expensive they could buy. They'd have a batting glove hanging down off the side of it. They'd have a sliding glove hanging down the other side. And they would have the sunshades on and just the right type of shorts to wear and jerseys and all of that. And they would prance around out there warming up and strutting around like a little banny rooster, wanting everybody to see them. And they couldn't play ball worth doing squat. And I would, I always thought that was so funny. And uh, the way it is about Flint and after. I'm not good at it. I'm average. And I don't like putting stuff sometimes because I don't want people to think. I'm a hot dog. I'll tell you right quick, I don't know much about nothing. 
And I still learn every day from watching some of my math and friends. I pick up on stuff every now and then. I'm going to stop on these. I hope y'all enjoyed it and have a blessed day.